thank you for joining me. Today we'll take a look at how to create a treasure box in a video game. Today we will use RPG Maker 2003. This is actually an old, old version of RPG Maker, and I think this particular build is actually quite old. If you pick up this software on Steam, you'll get a newer version that has some improvements over this one. You will find that if you can use one version of RPG Maker, your proficiency will translate across into other versions of RPG Maker. So I particularly like 2003 because you can use something called Easy RPG to run your RPG Maker 2003 games on platforms that are homebrew enabled. This includes the 3DS, PS Vita, and even the Wii, and many other game platforms. So I recommend 2003 if you want to make games that you can run on your homebrew enabled consoles. It's really cool. So with 2003, we can see that it's a great program to use because the tile set system allows you to quickly draw maps and it selects the bordering tiles for you and it allows the graphics to all blend uh, quite seamlessly into each other. This is something that is quite difficult to do um, just on your own, so RPG Maker has that built in. So what we'll do is we'll create an event here and we will scroll through the built-in graphics. RPG Maker programs come with a range of graphics that you may use. We'll look at our objects here. Take a look at the various directions so we can animate our objects and we'll select the treasure chest. Go ahead and give a name to that event just for the sake of organization. We double click into the event command area and you can see there's a wide range of commands here for you to explore. All of these control your game logic in terms of your programming. This is the same as programming. Instead of you having to type things in, you can select them from a list and you can control the logic here. What we want to do is add a potion to the inventory. Great. Now, where do these items come from? Let's open our database. If we head over to the items tab, you can see the items here. These are all default built in and of course for your projects you change the items accordingly to be exactly what you want. Just to see the effect here, we will rename this to Soda Pop. Now, if we open the event, you can see that if we scroll through the item list there, actually we've got the logic in there for adding the item twice. We can fix that later. Let's go ahead and test the game now and see what happens. Let's go up to our event, interact with the event, Hmm, but we don't really see anything happening, though we do have the logic. Part of game development is controlling the internal logic while expressing to the player, showing to the player that something has occurred. So what's missing is a message that says, you obtained an item. We'll add that, but what we also want to do is make sure that the player can only pick up the item once. Let's go ahead and look through our event commands. What we want to look for is a way to control the logic so that the player can only pick up the item once and we use that with a concept called a switch. A switch is like a light switch. You can turn it off and on. Here we can set some options for the message window. Right now that's not so important, but we'll put that in there anyway. Then we'll put in a message that again, much of game design is about conveyance. You must convey to the player the change in the game state. It's all really just a bunch of numbers. So first we will put in the message and then we will put in the logic that allows the item to only be picked up one time. You got a soda pop. So now the player knows 
they obtained an item. At the moment, you can see we can pick up the item an infinite number of times. This may not be what you intend. It might make the game a little too easy if the player can just pick up infinite items. Now we will add our logic. Let's go ahead onto page three of event commands. We'll go to the conditional branch. We will select a switch and give that a name. This is for the sake of organization. Let's name that treasure one. And we will say if the switch is off. By default, all switches are off. We also want to leave that checked so we can control the logic for the opposite. So we'll go ahead and cut and paste the logic inside of the branch. Now, if the switch is turned off, we will be able to pick up the item. Now we need to turn the switch on. Again, a switch is just like a light switch in real life, on or off. We will select our switch and turn that on. That switch is selected by default since it's number one, and we will turn it on. Now the switch is turned on. Let's go ahead and add a message. So if the switch is not turned off, else means that it is the opposite of the condition, then we can put a message in there that says the box is empty. So let's have a look at our logic here. Here we have our logic for changing the graphic of the character. Let's just go ahead and make this event face up. We know that if the event faces up, the treasure box will look open. So we'll add that. We'll go ahead and copy and paste that as well. Now we will click apply. If we have a look at our logic here, if this logic functions correctly, the player should be able to pick up the item. Then it will change the switch that is titled treasure one to on and the player won't be able to pick it up. So we can see that the switch logic does function using the conditional branch because we've changed the switch from off to on and now the player cannot pick it up again. Hmm, this boat seems to be stuck on land. Let's go ahead and change that raft out, and we'll change it into a ship. Let's just see what the ship looks like. Now, if we have a look at our events here, again, we'll review our logic. If the switch is off, we allow the contained logic to run. And that logic can only run, if you want to edit, you can use the space button after you select the item and press space. So first the event faces up, then we add the item to inventory. We set the options for the text window we display the text to let the player know they obtained an item and then we change the switch from off to on that means that this branch can no longer run it will now run the else logic so the else means the opposite of off the event will face up to change the graphic and we see the message that the treasure box is empty and that is the logic Again, we'll go ahead and run that. This ship is also stranded on land. And we see the logic. The switch is activated, and we run the else logic because the switch is now on. Next, we will determine how the player can access the treasure chest only if the player has been given permission by another NPC. Let's see what that takes. We will create a new event over here by right-clicking and going new event. Let's go ahead and select a character. Double-click on the event command area and we'll put in logic for conditional branch will create a new switch have permission
So if have permission is turned off, then we will run the logic that is contained within the brackets. The message will be, you have permission to open the treasure chest. Then, we want to change the switch using switch operations. We'll go ahead and select have permission, turn that to on. Now the event will display a different message because the switch is on. You already have permission. That's quite simple, easy to do. Now, we will want to make this logic function for the treasure chest. Let's go ahead and edit this event. What we'll do is take a look. You can see we have various pages here. The pages allow the logic to run if a switch is on, but in this case, we don't have a way to run logic if a switch is off. So in this situation, using the switch condition on the page is not helpful to us. We want to be able to display a message that says you do not have permission. So this method does not help us. It will not allow us to achieve what we require. So let's go ahead and add a new conditional branch. Have permission is on. If you have permission, you can open the treasure chest. We'll go ahead and cut and paste all of our existing logic inside of the conditional branch if the player has permission. Now we'll add a message for displaying if the player does not have permission. Again, we'll put this in the else case. The else case, again, is the logic that runs for the opposite of the switch condition. Now let's try to open the treasure chest. As expected, we don't have permission to take the treasure because of our new logic. Let's talk to the NPC. You have permission to take the treasure. And you can see you already have my permission to take the treasure. Now the player is able to take the treasure chest because the NPC has activated the switch, has switched to on. And that is all the basic logic that goes into opening a treasure chest in a video game. Whether you are using different game engines like Unity, Unreal, Godot, Default, Love, or any other game engine, the philosophy behind this is exactly the same. The game design logic is basically the same, though the implementation may be a little bit different and vary from engine to engine. This is how it works. So I hope this was interesting to you. If you would like to see a program that you can use to create your own 8 and 16-bit style sound effects for your games, then you can click the link on screen here. I'll put the link in the description as well. You can use this program called BFXR, and it is free. You can use that to create sound effects for your games, even if you're creating your game in RPG Maker. Thanks very much for watching. Take care. Be well.